Hello everyone, welcome to Unit 7, Human Nutrition and the Digestive System presentation done by me, Sarinda Westwood. So in this presentation, we'll be looking at um, the structure and the functions required in order to support digestion. We'll be looking at mechanical and chemical digestion as well as optimal conditions for the enzymes involved. And lastly, we'll talk about the constituent um, food groups of a balanced diet and their sources. <clears throat> so firstly, we're going to look at the structure and functions of the digestive system. So the diagram here shows you the structure of the of the um, digestive system. So the main organs which consist of the alimentary canal also known as the GI tract. So this includes the mouth where food's consumed, um, chewed and then saliva glands produce saliva, known as digestive juices, which help to soften and dampen food that's consumed. So that will support the food to move to the esophagus. So this allows peris peristalsis, so that's a contraction that moves food through to the digestive tract into the stomach where the glands in the stomach lining produce stomach acid and enzymes. So these break down the food that are being consumed. So the muscles in the stomach assist in mixing the food with the digestive juices. The pancreas produce, um, produce digestive juices that contain enzymes that help to break down carbohydrates, fats and proteins. So the pancreas sends the juices to the small intestines by way of ducts. However, the liver produces bile, which supports digesting fats and vitamins. Bile ducts are moved to the gallbladder and are stored in small intestines and they're, they're used. So the accessory organs are known as the liver, pancreas and the gallbladder. So the small intestines contain three parts, um, the diodenum, the jejunum and last the ileum, which is based at the end. The large intestines consist of the appendix, the cecalum, the colon and then the rectum. So the bacteria in the large intestines assist to break down the nutrients that are left and create vitamin K. Food that is too large to be digested becomes excrement and um, this also includes digestive waste so all these organs are literally linked together in a tube known as a lumen um, organ that leads food from the mouth to the anus for waste to be ejected. Um, the digestive system it's basically a general structure which is modified at different levels to provide for the processes occurring at each level. All the organs need to work um, well together in order to function correctly. So, um, so we've just basically gone through the process of um, ingestion. Um, swallowing food and drink, so the digestion, where food is broken down into small molecules, the absorption, where the digestion produce, um, the, the digestion process is taking place, the small molecules produce um, nutrients and are absorbed into the body, um, and then elimination, where undigested food is eliminate, el eliminated through the anus. Um, so we're going to look at how the process begins. So we're going to look at the chemical um, digestion and the, the mechanical digestion too. So chemical and mechanical digestion are two ways in which the body supports in order to break down um, food. So the chemical digestion includes the secretion of enzymes all through the digestive tract. The enzymes split the chemical bonds that store food particles together into smaller pieces in order to be easily digestible. So mechanical digestion begins in the mouth and it all starts through the salivary glands. When chewing food, um, mastication, saliva is released into the mouth. Saliva carries digestive enzymes. 
um, which cause the beginning of the chemical digestion process, which by the enzymes, um, an acid are secreted, resulting in the rest of the food being broken down. So enzymes basically create a chemical reaction in order to help support getting rid of toxins, um, building muscles and crushing food particles through digestion, which then the body uses as fuel. So um, amylis, amylase is a, a type of enzyme which allows the process of breaking down starches and carbohydrates into sugar through the saliva. Pepsin is also another type of um, enzyme. It's usually found in the stomach and it supports digestive proteins that are found in ingested foods. So we're going to talk a bit about um, optimum conditions um, for enzymes. So enzymes can only work in certain conditions and um, they work best at normal body temperature, which is 37 Celsius. Um, if the body's temperature was lower than this, then the enzymes would still process but at a slower rate. However, if the body temperature was higher and the environment was acidic, then this would cause the enzymes to change shape, which would also change the shape of the active site, meaning the substrate would not join and the enzyme cause the enzymes to be inactive. Um, the enzymes in the intestines work better at um, roughly P, um, 8 pH as different enzymes allow dissimilar levels of acidity. So we're going to look at the constituent food groups of a balanced diet and um, their sources. So there you go. So, in order for the body to grow and function correctly, um, a healthy diet is um, vital. There's five key food groups. So, group one, you've got proteins. Now, proteins can be found in meat, fish, eggs, and they're rich in source. Uh, they're a rich source of um, proteins, ions, fiber, and zinc. And they also help to give a boost to the immune system. So food group two is carbohydrates, which is um, foods such as bread, cereals and potatoes. Mm -hmm. These help to support energy, stamina and strength. So we've got three, um, food group three, which is fruits and vegetables, which are a um, good source of vitamins and minerals and help the immune system and such as, you know, kale, green um green vegetables lettuce cabbage are good for um iron um so we got food group for dairy and alter, alter, uh, alternatives such as um cheese soya yogurt which is a source of vitamin d um milk provides calcium for strong bones and teeth and proteins so lastly we've got um oils and spreads uh, now these should be eaten in small amounts as um, disproportionate amounts can cause obesity, um, high cholesterol levels, problems with your heart. Um, however, as they provide vitamins in the body, they're still ideal in small amounts in a, in a balanced diet. So um, thank you everybody for listening to um, this presentation. Yeah. <laughs>